As a family, we return to Malaysia a lot. There, I have a sense of belonging I don't experience in New Zealand, but also a consciousness of growing up in a very Western world. For many, a trip to the homeland is a turning point. Growing up in, in New Zealand as a third generation Kiwi, for me, you know, just trying to fit in was enough. <laughs> Going back to China made me really think about, wow, what it is to be Chinese and the culture and the history of it. Quite amazing, you know. <laughs> Meeting a relative, the first person in the village, was quite overwhelming, you know. And I think that's why I forgot about the camera a little bit, <laughs> the directing part, but just kind of enjoy the experience, yeah. Being, being a cartoonist, obviously it's kind of a, a very visual thing, so I'm kind of... I didn't even realise it until fairly recently, but I actually do kind of suck up all kind of everything that's going on around me. There were um, some awful cartoons done at the turn yeah. of the century. Yes. Yeah, the Yellow Peril cartoons, yeah. Mm. It was very anti-Chinese, and then um, whereas the stuff that I do for, for Brotown, for instance, there's a lot more humanity in the kind of work and we're kind of making fun of everyone and all the different cultures and that, but that's kind of the point of it. It's kind of showing that everyone's kind of silly, but let's all just kind of get along anyway. Oh, I used to think islanders were inefficient and uneconomical, but now I see that's not a bad thing. And we used to not like Asians, but now we see that your people make yummy food and you're loaded. Wong's a strange character. He's a, a new immigrant needed. from Hong Kong, and he's he's loaded, and he <laughs> wears suits. Wow! I hope I'm better looking than Wong. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's hard to define what an Asian actually looks like, because there's just so much variety. Um, but when it comes to cartooning, you just kind of go back to the stereotypes. <laughs> Grasshopper! Your English is really good. Third generation Kiwi, mate. At the moment, I'm trying to work on my next comic, which is a kung fu comic, so I'm kind of looking at kung fu films and all that kind of stuff. But I also want to make each individual look like an individual, not just a Chinese person. Yeah, but basically, I just love kung fu. <laughs> Everybody has to yeah. so cool now. <laughs> Chinese people are cool now. It's like. It's like, you know, they're like, you see a Chinese guy at school, everyone wants to be his friend, quickly. It's funny because it's like, it's like, why is that? Um, because uh, the TV, the TVs are flooded with kung fu movies and um, flooded with a lot of icons now, you know? People say it's cool to be Chinese now, eh? Hey? Um... <laughs> I've heard the rumour, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure either, it's a bit presumptuous of me to say being Chinese. Whatever's happened from there to now, something or someone has done something right, so... This is much more cool to be Chinese now than, than in the past, yeah. Well, the, 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 the rising economic power of China and the, the, and the new profile of China as a world power has got a lot to do with it. Oh. hand make these at home when we were in Taranaki because you couldn't get them in those days. This is char siu bao or steamed pork bun and let me tell you when I had this at my lunch box at school I was outcast. But now check it out. Half the country lining up to eat them. The only reason I would be pessimistic I suppose is that if there were to be another wave of migration and we'd go through this all again and I'm absolutely convinced we would go through this all again because this is the way human beings are. The next group along is, is the international students, and there's 34,000 of them in New Zealand. They're so vulnerable, they have no parents here. The government doesn't plan for them in policy. It's also the group that's been most scapegoated by the media, with, with the least amount of ability for them to respond in the media. And they're just such an easy target. Five generations down the line, we will still be calling ourselves Chinese New Zealander, because a Chinese is a visible thing. Now, whereas if I had been Danish or Dutch, or South African, next generation, and New Zealander. No one will say, how come? It's a misconception to think that 
we are that different, that Chinese community are that different from the Pākehā community. I think we need to move away from racial differences and go for cultural similarities yeah, and cultural tolerance. We're building a kind of a cultural um, movement in a way. Um, we've sort of reshaped the city in an image in, in Auckland. Um, and it's much easier to just walk around and feel comfortable. I don't feel like a minority, I don't feel marginalised. I feel like this is our town. The whole metaphor of the, um, of the, of the melting pot is not very good because, you know, it, it basically homogenises everybody, makes everybody generic and the same. Whereas, in fact, we, we, we live in this, I like to call it fruit salad. <laughs> you know, if you're a pineapple, you remain a pineapple, but you can, you know, mix with the juices of a watermelon and be, you know, and keep your colour and keep your texture and everything. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> but, yeah. So the day that when New Zealand becomes at ease with Chinese will be the day that New Zealand come of age. New Zealanders will know who all of us are if they can accept the Chinese. New Zealanders. persecution. We look, we're different. We, we look different. We eat different. We don't play rugby and that's like a criminal offence in this country. But over time, the, the foreign has become the familiar and nights like this show me Chinese New Zealanders celebrating our difference and all other Kiwis from different walks of life, shapes and sizes celebrating it with us. What does it mean to be Irish? You get to sing and dance and drink and everything's somebody else's fault. Teresa Healy travels New Zealand to discover... How much of what we now call Kiwi comes from those Irish roots? There'll be rugby greats, split ends, booze... Uncomfortable just drinking continuously. ...and Catholic schoolgirls. It's true what they say about convent girls. Forbidden fruit's always the sweetest. We went wild! They must have populated half the world by now. <laughs> Here to stay, next Monday, TV One.